Hi, um, I'm live. I can't believe this. Um, I had a few technical issues, so apologies for the late start. Um, I'm Dorian from Dorian Think to Success, and um, first time I'm going live, to be honest. Um, I'm here to answer your theory test questions, as it says here. I'm answering your questions live and direct, so any issues that you may have, please put it in the comments below. Type in hi and let me know where you're from in the UK, whereabouts you're watching from. Um, what I want to do first of all, before we really get going is, uh, thank everyone. First of all, um, I reached a thousand subscribers this week and obviously it's due to you guys, um, watching, liking, commenting, subscribing. And I appreciate that when I first on the channel, I didn't expect to reach a thousand subscribers. My aim was just to help a few people out, um, here and there. Um, but the comments and the, the comments I get from you guys are really, really, um, appreciative. Um, and I appreciate that first of all, um, and I'm glad I've helped so many people pass their theory test. And even with some of the driving videos that I have put on, um, pupils have found that interesting as well. Um, some guys, some of you guys have actually got the test routes that I've actually recorded as well. So yeah, I just want to thank everyone for, um, making me reach a thousand subscribers. Um, so hopefully many more will come. So my aim is to give back to you guys for that. Um, and like I said, I'm doing live, a live stream. Um, hopefully my aim is to, uh, do this on a regular basis and do live mock tests and go for it with you guys as well. So if you've got any questions, like I said, put it in the comments, please put a cue in front of it. Um, of your questions as well. It makes me, it makes it easier for me to find that particular question and I can um, answer it as we go along. I'd like to just give an overview of the theory test because a lot of pupils don't realize what the theory test involves. They just know it's questions. And first of all, you have a multiple choice. It's 50 questions. Um, you have to get 43 out of 50 to pass that stage. Um, and it's multiple choice, A, B, C, D. And it's got different categories, as you can see on the screen. It covers alertness, attitude, safety, road signs. And it's, long, it's about 15 different categories it covers. So like I said, you do need to get 43 out of 50 to pass that stage. You do have a total of 57 minutes to um, answer the questions. Um, once you've done the questions, you do need to move on to the hazard perception. The video clips is about a minute long with the hazard perceptions. Um, and there's 14 videos on the hazard perception. One, one of them's got a double hazard, so you can score a maximum of 10 on that particular hazard. And on the other 13, there's single hazard, which you can score a maximum of 5. Um, and you need to score 44 out of 75 on that. Um, the videos have now gone to CGI. So I know I've recommended the DVS, DVSA app and the Driving Test Success app as well. With those two apps, they do a combination of CGI's and the old school videos. But when you go to take your theory test live, um, it is actually um, all CGI's. It's actually a lot slower than apps as well, so it's slightly easier if you've practiced on the on the original apps. Um, in terms of what the ferry test is looking for, it looks for safety. It's always going to be a safe outcome. If it's not a safe outcome, it's going to be a controlled outcome with the theory test um, and a common sense answer. There's always a stupid answer on there. Um, so if you've done your study and you know what you're looking for, but like I said, there's always a stupid answer on there which you can always eliminate that from your A, B, C, Ds. But majority, majority of the questions and answers are about safety and it's also about control. If you haven't got safety or control in your answer, the chances are you're going to be um, wrong with that as well. I have done the video which is on the channel um, five common mistakes which you can um, look up and um, watch that video it gives you some hints and tips on that of what not to do basically um, and the myths of the theory test of trying to trick you the theory test never tries to trick you they are there to promote road safety just like the driving test is 
It's all about road safety. Um, and know some of the answers sometimes because when I run the courses that we do, pupils always say, that's a trick answer, it's a trick question. It's never a trick answer, it's never a trick question. It's just um, straightforward safety, control, common sense answer. They will never try to trick you because that's not what the driving test is about. And most of the questions are based on the highway code. So that's what you do need to know as well. The highway code is actually the examiner's Bible, which you do need to um, know as well. And especially with the changes that happened, I think last weekend with cyclists and pedestrians crossing the road, it's gonna be useful because they're gonna implement that into the driving test. Right, so um, if you've got, like I said, if you've got any questions or comments, just please leave it in the, tap, tap it in the chat so I can take a look and answer that as we go along. Um, just trying to get used to this software because like I said, this is my first live, so please bear with me with that. Um, what are your guys' biggest struggle with the theory test? Let me know about that as well. What do you guys really struggle with? And see if I can um, help you sort that out. Let me bring, let me just get rid of this. Yeah, so let me know what your biggest struggles are with the theory test. When I do the courses, the biggest struggle, which most people tend to have, is lack of understanding. Um, they really don't know what they're looking for in terms of answering questions. Um, and like I said before, they're not trying to trick you or anything like that. They're just looking for a simple common sense answer. So yeah, let me know in the comments. Um, so I'm just trying to understand this. Yeah, let me know what your biggest struggles are with your theory test. And if you've got any questions, um, please put a cue before the questions so I can um, find it a lot easier as well. Oh, what I can do is um, go through a couple of questions. If I can actually bring up my account, bear with me one second. Uh, there's my account for the theory to success. And is there a random paper? If I bring this over here, right. Okay, what I will do, I can do a live mock test. I'll do a 20, 20 question mock test, not 20 seconds. 20 question mock test and see how we get on with that. If I can just share my screen, give share my screen and it's this one all right just let me know in the comments as well if you can actually see that screen as well section right so let's do it i wasn't planning to do this but let's do a live uh 20 question mock test is random questions and see how you guys get on um, it is my desire to achieve driving unaccompanied on the road by March 22. What would you advise I do? My confusion is how to manage to achieve my practical tests. It's booking, etc. So let me just read this question again. Um, it's my desire to achieve driving unaccompanied on the road by March 2022. What would you advise I do? My confusion is how to manage to achieve my practical tests. It's booking, etc. Right, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce your name because I'm going to mess that up completely. Could you just let me know if you've passed your theory test, first of all, and then I can advise you from there. So let me know if you've passed your theory test. While I'm waiting for them to come back to me, um, like I said, let's work through this uh, mock test together. So... First question, you're in front of a queue of traffic waiting to turn right into a side road. Why is it important to check your right mirror just before turning? Um, 
about safety, go back to what I said earlier on. You want to apply the safety factor to this. So why is it important to check your right door mirror before turning? The question is what you're looking for in terms of turning. So you're looking for cyclists, motorbikes overtaking you. So something along those lines. So looking for pedestrians about to cross. They wouldn't cross. If, they're, if you're looking in the mirror, they're going to be behind you. So technically it's going to be safe anyway. So make sure the side road is clear. Again, you're looking in the mirror, so the side road is going to be in front of you, so the mirror is not going to help you out on that situation. To check for emerging traffic, emerging traffic is coming from the side road that you're going to, so it's got to be for checking for overtaking vehicles, which would be your answer. So that's what you're looking for. Like I say, it's always about applying safety first. If you try to work out what the question's asking you, then you have a better chance of getting the answer, if that makes sense, rather than looking for the answer first of all so try to work out what the questions asking you have an idea and then go looking for the answer in terms of that so let me just check the comments to see if they've come back to me to see if they've passed the theory test and all right let's take a look i'm hopeful i would pass having registered for the 21st thank you so you're still not making it clear what have you registered for on the 21st and 21st of what I'm assuming it's 21st of March or 21st of February so have you registered for the theory test on the 21st and what month or is it your driving test you registered for that's what I need to know if you if it's the theory test you've registered for or the driving test Right, while we're waiting for that, let's go on to the second question, right? What does this sign mean? Right, you've got a red circle. Red circles mean no, technically. So you're looking for a no in your answer. 95% of red circles are no's. If you haven't got a no in your answer, the chances are you're going to be wrong with that. So um, I always recommend that you look for the, when you go to the A, B, C, Ds, look for the two boxes of no's. They always give you two with no's. So as you can see here, You've got no overtaking and no motor vehicles. Once you isolate those two, you can go back to the circle and work out what it is. With the motorbike, motor car, um, you're looking for no motor vehicles on that one. So let me click on that. And that's your answer. So let me go back because they have come back to me with this. All right. 21st of February for the theory test. Thank you. Right. So you got your theory test on the 21st of February, which is brilliant. Um, Obviously you need to pass that. So if you're having struggles with that, let me know. So I can help you out with that or um, any advice that you need on that. So once you pass your theory test on the 21st, you can now book your driving test. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. Um, the waiting time for a driving test is really, really long at this precise moment. Um, the only thing I could suggest to you is obviously go into the booking form or the um, DVSA website and then try to book a driving test. Whatever date you get on there, it could be four months, five months from now, still take it. It's not a problem. Take the date because if you don't take it, you're going to have nothing. And then what you want to try to do is every so often log on and try to look for cancellations. Um, the other way around it, there's some apps out there. Um, but you have to be careful with the apps that will try to book driving tests for you. I'll be honest with those apps as well. They're not 100% reliable. I know a few people who've had success with it and know people who haven't had success with it. But they're, you can Google it, just um, driving test apps. They are charging over the odds now for obvious reasons because people are desperate for a driving test. They will pay anything. So you can try to use apps to bring your test forwards. But my advice is focus on passing the theory test on the 21st because with that, that you can't go forwards. And then once you've passed the theory test, then look to go online and book your driving test. Whatever date comes up, um, try to take that date. And like I said, try to log on every so often and try to bring the dates forward. If you've got a driving instructor, um, you can try and ask your driving instructors to ask other driving instructors to swap test dates because I know quite a few of my instructors that I know are swapping dates with other instructors at different test centres. So that may be an advantage if you've got a driving instructor already taking driving lessons. Um, 
I think, let me just go back to your previous comment. You want to be driving by March 22nd, which is next month. I'll be honest with you, that's unlikely. And that's only because of the waiting time. That's going to be really unlikely, but that's because of the waiting time. But if you don't try, you don't know. My advice is first and foremost, just pass the theory test. And then at least that way you're on your way. But without the theory test, you're not going to go any further. So I hope that answered your question. Um, if not, get back to me in the comments below. Um, while you're doing that, I'll um, go on to the next question. So you're in the left hand lane at the traffic lights. Waiting to turn left, which signal means you must wait? So you're turning left at the traffic lights, which one of these suggests that you must wait? And the simplest way to do this is to work out which one means go. So you've got C is go, B is go, and D is go. And so you're left with A, and A with the red and amber, that means get ready. For those of you taking driving lessons, that would be your POM, preparation, observation, maneuver. So the one that says that you must wait is A. Um, let me just check on the comments, see if there's any other comments or questions on there. No, so while we're doing that, waiting for more to come through, let's take this question. Right, what requires extra care when you're driving or riding in windy conditions? Um, so moving off on a hill doesn't take extra care, doesn't change whether it's windy or not. Turning into a narrow road again doesn't affect you if it's windy or not. Using the brakes again doesn't affect you, windy conditions and passing pedal cyclists. Obviously, if you're passing cyclists and it's windy, they could be blown into your path. So if you're looking at that as an answer. Okay, um, this question, the fluid level in your battery is low. What fluid should you use to top it up? Right, with this one, this comes up a lot. The common answer that my pupils tend to go for is battery acid. Um, and obviously, acid can't be safe. So, um, engine oil is not the correct answer because that just goes straight into the engine. Engine coolant goes straight into the engine, keeps the engine cool. And the answer for this one is distilled water. Um, they can ask you another question as well. How high do you fill it up? And it's the... Um, the heights you fill it up is just above the cell plate. That's the two questions that after the battery, which is um, what do you fill it up with is distilled water and how high do you fill it up is just above the cell plate is what you, how high you go with that. With uh, this question, where may you overtake on a one way street? Where may you overtake on a one way street? To be honest, because it's one way and everybody's going the same direction, it doesn't matter. With one-way streets, you can have lanes, um, left lane, middle lane, right lane. So it doesn't really make a difference where you overtake. So you're looking for something along those lines. On either the right or the left is a possible answer. On the left-hand sides, only on the left-hand side, no. Nope. Only on the right-hand side, no, nope. overtaking isn't allowed. Overtaking is allowed on a one-way street. So it's gonna be that answer there. Um, right, so you're on it. You're at an incident, what could you do to help an unconscious casualty? So they're unconscious. With someone that's unconscious, you wanna make sure they're still breathing. Um, so that's what you really wanna be doing. So that's what you're looking for in terms of the answers. So splash their face with cool water. No, check their breathing normally, possible. Take photographs of the scene. Obviously you don't wanna be doing that. Move them to somewhere more comfortable. If they're safe and well, just unconscious never move someone unnecessarily basically by moving someone unnecessarily you can cause them more harm than good so it's going to be checked that they're breathing normally so let me just check back in the comments if there's any more comments or questions um right, i've answered that one okay there's no more comments at the moment okay um let's get rid of that Right, where is your vehicle most likely to be affected by side winds? Where is your vehicle most likely to be affected by side winds? Right, um, with this, your vehicle's most likely to be affected by side winds on it is an open road, 
where there's no houses, trees, so like grass fields either side or on a bridge. Um, so that's what you're looking for. Um, so on a long straight road, on a long straight road can have houses and trees, so it can't be that one. On an open stretch of road, which is a possible answer, on a busy stretch of road, no. And on a narrow country lane, if it's narrow, then it's more concealed, so it's unlikely to be affected by wind, so it's going to be this answer. Um, right, this one, what should you do if your vehicle breaks down in a tunnel? So what should you do if your vehicle breaks down in a tunnel? Right, safety, stand in front of your vehicle warning oncoming drivers, definitely not. Stand in the lane behind your vehicle to warn others, definitely not because both of those definitely can't be safe. Stay in your vehicle and wait for the police, no. Because if you're waiting in your vehicle, how do the police know you're in there, first of all? If someone goes in the back of you, that's a possible whiplash um, that's going to happen. And switch on your hazard warning lights, then go and call for help. So it's going to be this one. What you want to do is switch on your hazard lights to let people know that there is an issue with your car. And then obviously, when it's safe to do so, only when it's safe to do so, come out of your car. Don't stay in your car. Because like I said, someone goes in the back of it, it's a possible whiplash for you. So it's going to switch on your headlights and then go and call for help. There's normally phones within a tunnel as well, so you can make the phone call within a tunnel. This one, uh, when would you use the right-hand lane of a two-lane carriageway? When would you use the right-hand lane of a two-lane carriageway? Right, because it's a dual carriageway, dual carriageways, the, the right-hand lane is used for overtaking or turning right on a dual carriageway. If, if it was a motorway question, it would be just for overtaking and right-hand lane, but because it's dual carriageways for overtaking or turning right. So when you're traveling at a constant high speed, no. When you're passing a side road on the left, no. When you're staying at the minimum allowed speed, no. And when you're turning right or overtaking, which is that one. Uh, Right, why is it a good idea to plan your journey to avoid busy times? Why is it why is it a good idea? Okay, um, it will cause more traffic congestion. If you're avoiding busy times, it won't cause more traffic congestion. It's going to ease traffic congestion. Your journey time will be longer. If you're planning your journey, it should be shorter. And you're trying to avoid busy times. So your journey will be shorter, not longer. Um, you'll have an easier journey. It's a possible answer. And you'll have a more stressful journey. You'll have a more stressful journey. So it's not going to be that one. You'll have an easier journey because you're avoiding. Why is it a good idea to plan your journey to avoid busier times? Yeah, it's going to have been an easier journey because you're avoiding busier times, less stress. You also got to remember the theory test is also aimed at new drivers not really experienced drivers that end at new drivers the more calmer you can be especially after just passing your driving test the safer you're going to be um the stats back up in the first two years you're most likely to have an accident um so the more information you have i.e plan your drive plan your journey you should become a bit more relaxed as well that's the reason why that answer is what it is um what will happen to your car when you drive up a steep hill what will happen to your car when you drive up a steep hill it's going to work harder imagine that you're walking up a hill steep hill you work harder you have to let me just remove this comment right sorry yeah so when you're going up a steep hill walking you work harder so your car's going to be working harder so that's what we're looking for something along those lines so overtaking will be easier no, steering will be heavier, or feel heavier, steering will feel heavier. The high gears will pull better. The engine will work harder. The engine is definitely going to be working harder going up a steep hill. And what should you do as you approach this lorry? With lorries, they have a different reference point for turning. Um, which means when they swing around the corner, they're going to be more wider. Um, so with this, if you're approaching this, you want to be slowing down or backing off from the lorry, something along those lines. So make the lorry 
wait for you, definitely not. Slow down and be prepared to wait. Yep, slow down, safety factor, slow down and be prepared, prepared to wait for the lorry to come out and do what it's got to do. Move to the right hand side of the road. Obviously, if you move to the right hand side, you can't be safe. Flash your lights at the lorry. Flashing your lights is warning of your presence, but the lorry's going to know you're there, so you should, definitely should be flashing your lights, especially on the driving test as well, anyway. So it's going to be along those lines. When may you enter a box junction? The only time you can enter a box junction safely and legally is when turning right and your exit is clear. So that's something along the lines we're looking for. When traffic signs direct you, definitely not. When signaled by another road user, you should never go in the box when signaled by another road user. When there are fewer than two vehicles ahead, nope. When your exit road is clear and it's gonna be that one. Again, just still no more comments coming in, no more questions. If, like I said, if you've got any questions or concerns about your theory test, please put it in the chat box and I will pick it up and answer it. In the meantime, we'll carry on with the mock test. Which lights should you use when you're driving in a tunnel? Any lights that you use during the daytime or in a tunnel should be dip lights. Any other lights outside your dipped fog lights, main beam, are special circumstances. So it's always going to be um, dip lights in normal circumstances. So the first answer at the box is dip headlights. But always check all the other answers, like I always say. Front spotlights, no. Rear fog lights, no. And side lights, no. So it's going to be your dip lights. What hazard should you be aware of when traveling along this street? Right, because you've got cars parked up and the road is narrow, there's several things you should be looking out for. Um, children, doors opening are the top common two, and the cars moving off with no signal. So those are the type of hazards that you're looking for. So on this one, and let's read the question again, what hazard should you be aware of when traveling along the street? Children running between out between vehicles which is the most likely one glare from the sun definitely not lack of road markings no large good vehicles no so it's going to be children running out between the vehicles less space less speed is what you should be doing in that situation right this sign is a contra flow um contra in driving means going against so in this situation you're going up with the flow of traffic and the bus is going against the flow of traffic. So that's contra flow. And the other question that normally comes up with is, where would you find it? It's a one way street. So they're asking, what does it mean? It means a contra flow bus link. It's got a picture of a bus. Contra flow bus link is the first one out, but always check the other answers. Give way to buses, no. With flow bus lane. With flow bus lane will be um, no arrow underneath the bus. The bus will now be on the left hand side. So with flow would be no arrow. But because it's got the arrow against, that's contra flow. So that's going to be your answer. Who should obey diamond shape? Right, this shape is for tram drivers. So it's actually for trams. Um, most driving signs are red, red or blue or green if it's dual carriageway. So this is for trams. So it's not bus, taxi, no. Tram drivers is what we're looking for. There you have it. And this one, what can you do to reduce environmentally, environmental damage caused by your vehicle? What can you do? Make less journeys um, is the most common answer, but let's take a look what's there. Use air conditioning whenever you drive. No, nope. avoid using cruise control. No, use the gears to slow the vehicle. No. Avoid making lots of short journeys. So basically, if you've got to go to the corner shop, walk or cycle rather than drive. Um, the less you drive, the less fumes you're putting out the back of the exhaust. Uh, these lines are called rumble strips. What's a rumble device designed to do? They alert you um, about your speed and approach to hazards. So with this, they are painted slightly just above the road surface. So just above the road surface, so the car rumbles as it goes over. So the, if you're going too fast, it rumbles violently. Um, so you know you're too fast on approach to your problem or hazards. And if it's a nice, smooth rumble, then you know your speed is correct. So 
it alerts you about your speed alert you to a hazard as possible alert you to a low tire pressure no prevent cattle escaping no and give directions and there you have it so that's how you break down simple stuff on your theory test hopefully you got something from that um there's no more questions or comments coming in so i'm going to wrap it up there hopefully you got some value from this um i will look to do another live stream at some point um, another live mock test but as i said if you've got any concerns um how to study for your theory test leave it in the comments below and i will try to help you guys out as much as i can i'd like to thank all of you again who subscribe like comment on my videos for making it reach a thousand subscribers i really really appreciate that but i'm doran from doran think and says thanks for joining me today and hopefully i will see you in another video or another live stream